Hello, everyone. I'm Laurel Patak, the director and curator of art in general here in New York City. Hi, I'm Michal Novotny, and I'm the director of Center for Contemporary Art Futura in Prague. I want to say a quick thanks to CEC Arts Link, to Simon and Maxime, especially for organizing us here today, and for also allowing Art in General to host an amazing fellow this year. Thank you for that. Um, and I'm here speaking with a former CEC Li Arts Link fellow, Mikal, who I have had the pleasure of working with for the last five years in different ways to bring artists from across Eastern and Central Europe to New York. Um, and I had the pleasure of just opening an exhibition last night at Art in General that was guest curated by McCall called School of Pain. The show is up until January 26th. I encourage you to come by and have a look. Um, in brief, the show looks at um, different ways to think about economies of desire in relationship to the work of some very interesting artists. And McCall, maybe you could say a few more words about the exhibition. Um, maybe I could just invite you on Saturday. Uh, for a screening and performance that will be between between four and six in the afternoon, uh, where Mark Ter, who is a Czech artist, will screen a selection of his movies from the last 15 years that deal with two very different but somewhat connected topic of his queer identity and the stories of the Sudeten German, it's where the Czech German that were expelled from the country in 1945, because before the Second World War, 50% of the citizens of Czech Republic were actually Germans, and it's still a very tabooized topic. And there will be also Aditya Mandayam doing a kind of singing performance that also deals with his uh, complicated uh, cosmopolitan identity as he's half Sri Lankan, half Indian, but grew up in the UK and United States and now lives in Warsaw, in Poland. Uh, so this will be till six. So uh, I couldn't help but want to ask some impossible, unanswerable questions in eight minutes. And knowing McCall to also be a complex thinker, I thought he would be up for the task. Um, but really, I guess the, the very subject of global citizenship really, and you know, the work that we do institutionally at Art in General in an international context has me thinking a lot about the kind of climate of the world in which we're working right now. And in a cultural moment when we're seeing such a disturbing rise in nationalism here and in many other parts of the world, I'm thinking a lot about you know, what is art's role? How can art work to um, counter or undo such extremism? And I thought McCall would be an excellent person to talk about this with because actually in your broader career and also in the kind of grouping of artists and even some of the themes of the works in the show that's up now at Art in General, I think you've done a really exemplary job of working together with local, regional, and international contexts and scales in your curatorial work over the last many years. And I was wondering how you think about this and you know, how can we um, maybe think about the local, the regional, or the international as ways to kind of counter um, ideas of nationalism. Uh, maybe I can. Yeah. So of course it's a difficult question. <laughs> But um, I somehow wish that, that the global kind of citizenship would work, yeah, that we could all be humans. This is a big topic in the philosophy that I studied, where the people somehow never accepted the, uh, the post-colonial and post-human studies. idea that, unfortunately, we cannot be all humans because there have been so much bad done that we need to first undo somehow that. So the question is how to deal with it. I mean, I think that maybe the answer is always to kind of try to conceive the full scale. Uh, so when I'm, for example, doing the program of Futura Center, Center for Contemporary Art in Prague, um, when I arrived there, it was mainly an international art center. So in the context of the first decade of the millennium, it was very important to bring international artists to Prague. But when I arrived, I also understood, and at that time, still many directors of art institutions were publicly claiming that they are conceiving their program like if it would be anywhere else in the world like that they would do the program whatever they would be, which is impossible in a way. You are always in a certain place in the world, and this place has a meaning. So I try to add, of course, many local artists that I think would need some help to be exhibited there. But uh, I think at least the art institution should work as a certain bridge. So they should bring people there and also help other people to live on this bridge. 
and they should uh, somehow work with this from a certain point that needs to be built. So they also need the international acclaim, but they also need a local acclaim. And um, what is mainly my technique is that I'm trying to smuggle people somewhere. I'm trying to smuggle people in the local discourse. I'm trying to smuggle people in the international discourse. I'm trying to hide them in some trendy waves that they could be helping them to go up or the same to come to Prague. And the same I'm trying to play maybe uh, with the public that comes. In the Garden of Futura we have those two public sculptures that I do not find very extraordinary what comes to their artistic quality but they bring a lot of white public. And then we're kind of testing this white public in exposing them to maybe something what Inga show here, to some problems that they didn't really come to deal with because they just came to take a selfie with those sculptures. <laughs> but um, I think that this exposure in a way works. Um, and maybe this is you know, more a deep question that I would love to continue to think together with many people in the room and who are presenting later today about. But I think, you know, for me, thinking about this question, how can contemporary art negotiate identity when on the one hand, it's something that is extremely tied to cultural belonging and geographical context in really meaningful ways, um, but also to think about maybe what are the ideolo ideological structures that underpin much arts funding, um, because we see those structures as often legally, politically, and economically being quite bound to the logic of the nation state. So how can we kind of maneuver and work between those poles and terrain to think about what does it mean to undo or counter nationalism? There is usually two approaches in the public funding, and I'm running an institution that only runs on very different kind of public funding. Uh, at the beginning, it was mainly the passport, right? The foundations usually support only the artists who hold the right passport. Over the years, and also by pushing of me and other directors, we mo more came to the agreement that it's more the place of residency. So for example, now Czech artists can be supported or let's say ar artists can be supported by the Czech culture institution even though they do not have the right passport if they reside and work there. But I mean this in a way is also complicated, right? This is just another way of exclusion. So what I'm also very often questioning in my practice and maybe coming back to the kind of upheaval of nationalism in also the region where I come from, the Central East Europe is experiencing a, a big wave of nationalism. And I think that this grows from the fact that we have all a kind of big inferiority complex, right? That in some ways the we need a sense of belonging and maybe also the art has pushed it away a lot from the discourse that it has. So one of the things that I'm also questioning how art could create this sense of belonging. And therefore I think that uh, institutions that receive public funding should maybe in concert not so much of course with who they're doing, but if it's really meaningful because also often the kind of the cultural imperialist policy that for example residencies has been so much time used can be used well also despite the original fact that it is supposed to promote a certain nation culture and Europe this is omnipresent and of course the developed countries have uh, much more money for the cultural policy. Blatte Institute is a very strong funder pro Helvetia other funders but it doesn't mean that what the result is it's actually bad. So we are somehow still, of course, bound in the national state, which kind of collapse with the global world. But we don't really know, and I do not have the answer how to really overcome that, except in some kind of positive sense of belonging, some kind of positive sense of patriotism, because we do need also this patriotism. Otherwise, it may strike back as, a, as the kind of hardcore edge nationalism. I guess we are. We have one minute. Maybe uh, then I would ask uh, you the same question. How do you conceive your program being uh, one of the few non-profit institutions in such a difficult space like, like New York is also concerning to the question that you asked me? Yeah, um, I guess art in general has had a really long standing relationship to working with international artists. And it's an institution that was founded in the early 1980s founded by artists and uh, I think was very early to think 
a lot about what would it mean to bring artists from all different parts of the world to a place like New York, and to do that with a very interesting, like paying attention to geopolitics. So I think for me, maybe in brief, listening to the noise that is gonna drown me out in, in a, any minute now, um, I just think you, one has to be really careful in thinking complexly about these things and to realize that we are, you know, we are bound inside a much larger system. Thank you so much.